You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Polk. The Shoe In Show, the footwear industry's podcast, where we talk about everything and anything impacting footwear companies on the business side of things. Also talk about trends in the marketplaces and everything else underneath the sun. Um, Matt, how hey, are man. you doing today? I'm hanging in there, my friend, hanging in there, just plowing through Shoe In, which is what we do. <laughs> the scenes. And we've also got Jasmine on today as well. Jasmine, how are you doing? Doing well, Andy. Happy to have be back in the studio, our virtual studio. Indeed. Uh, these are always these are fun days when we do these, folks. If you don't know, we do do these back to back to back. We try to we try to put them all together, and it's fun because we get to hear a variety of different ideas all at one time, which helps us do our job better. But also, we know these episodes really help plant new ideas in, in folks' minds as they try to update business practices and and increase this the strength and veracity of their businesses out there. So uh, we hope you enjoy them. Today's episode, Matt, who we got today uh, to kind of uh, ameliorate the debate. Uh, this is a family affair as John Heron, FDRA Strategic Marketplace Advisor, is back uh, on Shoe and Show to pontificate and bloviate about all things marketplaces. And just to give an update as to kind of where we are as it relates to Fanny and his thoughts on kind of the other emerging regional markets for shoe shows, because John, as you join us, the landscape is shifting and changing and, and companies are trying to figure out what to do. And then what does FDRA do? It freaking drops a directory, a digital directory on top of the industry in all its glory. And so we want to talk about that as well. So John, welcome back to shoe and show my friend. Thanks. Hi, Matt, Andy, uh, Jasmine. How are you guys? Good. Good. Yeah, those those were some pretty big words you used uh, earlier. So I need to look up those bloviate and ambivalate, or I didn't know what you said, but <laughs> I'm very confused. Ameliorate the debate. Amel- ameliorate the debate. That's right. Okay, I'm a shoe guy. No idea what ameliorate. I can't spell it. Can't define it. it means Can enhance. you use it? Can you use it in another sentence? Uh, Abraham Lincoln ameliorated the debate. So that's back back in politics, historical references, but uh, okay. yeah, increase, enhance, you know, I got it rhymes, you. that's why I used it. <laughs> You're a poet. No, not at all. <laughs> There's no poets from Monroe, North Carolina, my friend. Oh, I yeah. doubt that. I doubt that. Well, I mean, close by, Randy Travis. It's true, yeah. man. People don't realize where, right outside. Where's he from? Well, He's Matt, from thanks. That's yeah, right. thanks. Thanks for having me on, Matt. I think it's it's it's, it's, it's exciting as we hit the He's show taking season. Back to conversation. <laughs> taking it back over, man. I mean, we got we got Abraham Lincoln, who would be tough to beat, apparently. Um, but um, but we have Abraham Lincoln here in the conversation. But yeah, I think the timing of this conversation is great. I think as, as we head into August and uh, we're getting ready to see people in person for the first time in a long time. Yeah, that'll be really strange. Now, this may air after that's happened. So we've had a super spreader event. We're sorry. We apologize to the industry. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't say that. that. John, let's talk about the digital directory because um, because you've worked hard to create a digital space for the industry to come together and have the right connection points and the right people and have the right information at their, at their fingertips. So walk us through the digital directory. Let's start there. And then we'll start talking about in-person events beyond that. Great. Yeah, I think, um, you know, again, as, as people on this call know, I was involved with Fannie prior to FTRA and Fannie merging. Um, and one of the historical attributes that Fannie gave the industry was a physical directory. And you would show up at every show from like the, the late 80s on. And you would, you know, one of the got to have things from that show was the directory. And it had obviously it had. All the information about who the who who's who of the footwear industry, you know, updates on on what their address was, what their phone page phone numbers were, and back then it was like the yellow pages of the directory. Um, 
over the course of time, that kind of became outdated. People didn't want to, you know, lug around something when information was shared so freely on their phones or uh, via uh, in, uh, you know, computers and email. Um, but back when Fannie started, that was the most valuable part, part of what Fannie delivered to the industry was a database that um, you could find out who everyone was, how to get into contact with them. And so what, what we tried to do was recreate that digitally. Uh, and so quite simply, we've created a, a footwear directory and we've gone out and got footweardirectory.org. Uh, and that directory will live on FDRA.org. It will live on Fannie.org. Um, and we're reaching out to the footwear community now so they can own the input of it. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you are a footwear brand and you want, you know, I just, I think we added Tom's this morning, Matt. And yeah. uh, uh, if you're a footwear brand and you want to be on the directory, please contact us. Um, we'll set up, a, we'll set up a, a, a brand page for you where you can insert your name Enter your brand name, links to your brand site, links to your sales staff, links to your online B2B network. Um, so people can view your line, view about your story, uh, obviously your brand logos. There's a spot for videos. It's a pretty robust engine that um, thanks to our friends at Material Exchange, uh, they helped customize and build out for us. So it's a unique, simple to use, very simple directory. Yeah. And I Obviously, you know, as you, you talk about the B2B platforms out there, one of the biggest challenges that we see is every brand is using something different, right? So it could, it could be any kind of B2B platform. Some people are creating their own B2Bs. Some of them are building on the back end of their PLM systems, uh, which is actually in some ways really smart because if you make adjustments uh, while you're sitting down in front of your merchandising team, you could actually update product in real time in the back end that flows to the factory. So there's some interesting things folks are doing, but the challenge is we're not here to replicate or replace any of those things, right? Yeah. We're here no. to we're here to connect as best we can all those things in one centralized place. So instead of a retailer going around with an Excel spreadsheet with 50 different URLs in one place, now they've got one one URL they can go to. Uh, search the brand they're looking for, find their address, find their B2B platform, find who their salesperson is. And, you know, along the way too, John, I, I know that we have events listed on there. So it's not just Fannie, but it's how do we connect everybody, all the buyers and retailers for all the different regional trade shows as well. Like what's one location where you can get your calendar synced up, know what's happening, uh, know where the cocktail parties are when we do Fannie's uh, and what's happening with that. So um, I, I think it's it's all a part of the efforts to unite the industry and to make things simpler and streamline them, as you say, for all the brands and retailers. Um, and there's no better way to do that through through digital because we're doing business through digital 24 seven. Doesn't matter if a cust if, if a shoe shoppers buying online um, or even during COVID as people are doing Zoom calls and showing samples or using platforms. So. I think this is just keeping in line with the times and saying, what what can we provide the industry that will help, you know, uh, synchronize business operations and, and, and buying power? Yeah, that's a great point, Andy. And, th and that's one of the things that we were we were contemplating is do we set up a digital platform? And, and so many people, both retailers and brands have different um, definitions of what that mean for them means yeah. for them. And so we just wanted to set up an infrastructure where they could they could plug in whatever they're using, whether you're a retailer or a brand, um, and and provide access for it. We're, we weren't mandating a certain system or a certain um, uh, a certain program. So um, yeah, yeah. It, it should be hopefully as easy as communication and as easy as information is out there in the um, in the digital world, this will be a, a consolidated place where people can, the forward industry can go to be, uh, to get information. Yeah. And it looks good too. It's slick. It's easy to use. Yeah. Like Love the logo. that's the thing too, is when we were building it, it's like, you know, we constantly think about user, user friendliness, user ability, how they view it. So I, my goal in all things, when we build things is, can I crash it? <laughs> can I, can I mess it up? Is there, you know, what, what as a user would I do that would, trip me up or make me, you know, like have a problem and, and I haven't found any issues so far or bugs. It's so seamless just to search and find what you need really quickly on the go. Um, so I, I'm excited that we're launching this to, to help the industry update the yellow pages. Um, 
Yeah. For the hey, industry. look, the only thing I'll, I'll close it on is that content out is only as good as content in. And so we, uh, you know, the way that we used to do it was send a note out saying, and, and you would update it statically. We want it to be updated dynamically. So we want brands to own their page, own updates. And um, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're doing that dynamically. So the content out is only going to be as good as the input that the FDRA members um, and the brands put into it. So we're really reaching out to people saying, own your page. The more information, the better. There's some great pages out there. There's others that are just basic. So either's fine, but uh, it's a it's a nice platform, and, and you you can choose to put what you want in. You can put you can list your president's home address if you want to, or you can <laughs> you know you can just put a, a a URL to your brand site. It's completely up to the brands to uh, to decide the level of information that they want to share. John, let's pivot to the kind of broader landscape of trade shows and we we we're we're always talking about this internally <laughs> the industry is talking about it in different forums and in formats uh, i'm on an advisory group that helps advise and inform about sourcing and magic and what are what are factory what are people looking for in factories and all when they come back and we get back up to running um and i know they're the the show in atlanta is is dynamic in a lot of ways and and Dallas is emerging. We've talked about these places before. And I, I really, my, my hypothesis right now is that the regional show is the landscape is going to be a regional show driven landscape, uh, which means the regional reps in those locations will be there um, in, in probably pretty big numbers. And the brands that want to make connections with those reps will be will be there and there'll be retailers coming in that serve that region. But we don't have like a national show, at least for the time being. Is that a good thing for the industry to kind of have this regional approach? What's your current thinking as you think about the landscape of the shoe show, um, you know, out there for our industry to take advantage of? Yeah, I think the first thing I think about when this conversation comes up is if you have this conversation with someone who's been in the footwear business, the first thing that will come to, to the conversation is, Oh, you remember the good old days when it was so simple and we'd all go to Vegas and, you know, and WSA was this great place where we could all get all this business done. Um, and, pe you know, the footwear industry waxes on poetically about what that was like in the quote unquote good old days. The reality is that those days aren't returning. And that's the first thing I think we all have, have got to accept that there's not going to be some magic bullet that comes back and provides order. Um, the, the landscape, the retail landscape, how consumers buy product has changed so dramatically since then. And we've got to understand that, you know, we're trending towards a point where one out of every two sales is going to be direct to consumer uh, that takes, you know, that retail out of the equation. And so there's so much energy and, and, and dollars going to, um, to that consumer. Um, and so things are changing. I'm not sure that answered your question, but um, I, I think, I think that you're right. I think regional shows are much more affordable. Um, you know, Atlanta is a great example. Um, and that's, you know, again, if you talk to Laura down there, I think it's more than a regional show. I think it's, it's becoming a half the country show. And she'd probably argue as well that she's getting buyers from California. I mean, she's getting buyers from all over to come to that show be because she's done, done such a great job of um, bringing together hundreds of brands um, and making it very, very affordable, very accessible. And it's a great, if you haven't been to Atlanta, it's a great vibe. Um, so I think regional shows and shows that, that, that are, are, that are, are, are done in that manner have a great, great future. Um, I do think there's a need for a consolidated effort of, of the, the big players in the industry to come together. Um, and that's why I'm bullish on New York. I'd say bullish on New York. I think when you have the, the showroom um, companies that, ha that have invested in New York, uh, that have showrooms, it's always nice for big retailers to come in and really sit down strategically for two to four hours with their major partners in, an, in a location that has everything, all the different product from past seasons, all the different iterations of product from future seasons. And you can't just do that in a 20 by 20 booth. You need a larger space, obviously what some of those booths were back in the day at WSA and also what are those, what those, those showrooms are um, in New York. 
Um, and even in Dallas, Dallas has, you know, Dallas is, is burgeoning with showrooms as well in the Dallas Market Center. So I think I think there's going to still be a need for those national shows. But you're right. Right now, Footwear doesn't have a national show that's a stake in the ground that everyone is attending. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I think that some of the habits that have been developed during COVID and this, this kind of hybrid model of connecting in person from time to time may, while doing a lot of stuff digitally and virtually is shown to be at least successful to, in some in some regards. So the question comes down to it. Uh, how many shows is too many shows and how many times getting together is too much time to get together? And can we can we do something that's a happy medium between the days of WSA, Fanny, Magic, and what we're experiencing now? Is there something that's going to be kind of in between? Yeah, that's a great point. I think, you know, in that conversation that we had at the Supply Chain Summit with Cliff Sifford, um, one of the things he said was how fresh the product was on his floor. Well, everyone did that without the normal product development cycles, the normal sales cycles. And he said his floor looks as fresh as ever. Now, there's some other things we can get into why that is. But what I what I mean by that is we we fi- we as an industry figured out how to do it without seeing in person all those digital tools that Andy was talking about um, that people have um, they're effective and if you just say I, hey the pandemic's over I'm going to turn key and go back to what I used to be done do what used to be done you're not going to be as efficient and um, you're going to be losing all of the the gains that you 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 know. You, you were forced to um, to go forward with uh, during the pandemic and working remotely through you know the efficiencies that 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 provided. So yeah, I definitely think moving forward, it's going to be a very hybrid model, and there is no set formula for how it's going to work. Yeah, I I think part of it is just mentality of saying we got to keep trying and trying new things and figuring out what what the pathway is going to be, and you know obviously it'll be new shows that may pop up. There may be others that, you know, go away. Um, when we're looking at Fanny and what we're trying to explore to bring the industry together to unite it, I think it'll continually change in what it looks like. Um, and, and I think that's not a bad thing. I think it's just trying, I mean, in order to find the value and get people together and, and find the best way forward, sometimes you've got to stumble through it a little bit. Um, and I, And I think it's, it's okay to, to try a lot of things. And if it doesn't work out, then you keep moving forward and you'll eventually find the way. Um, so I think a lot of it's mentality and keeping up that innovative mindset. And, and to your point, John, not, go, not, not going back to what it was just cause it's easy. Cause I just don't think it fits anymore. I just don't, you know, if you're going back to where you were, I, it's just, I, I don't see a future for people who go backwards to that, to that era. Yep. And look, the other thing I'll, I need to, to point out is the importance of these in-person events, because as we you know, there was one thing that we used to always talk about is the random interactions that take place, whether it's at a 210 gala or whether it's at, you know, the Footwear News um, Awards or a Fanny cocktail party or, you know, back in the day, taking a, uh, an account to a, a concert at WSA. Those those random interactions where you you as a us us as a small industry meet greet um and exchange ideas with each other um that's where opportunity lies and so i think it's i think it's exciting that there is some energy around getting back together um i i i I think december in new york is going to be again as Pat mentioned earlier we can't bring up any resurgence in the fall but hopefully you know that won't happen and we will have a robust active show uh the, the the last week of November, the first week of December in, in New York. Um, but I think that's going to be such a celebration of the industry, you know, at, at the 210 event, at Fannie Market Week, at, uh, at at the Footwear News Awards. I think that's going to be a fun time to get back together in a, in a community. The footwear industry has always been a small um, community of, of people that, again, I think all of us miss seeing our friends. So it's, it's going to be fun to get back together. That indeed, that indeed. Well, um, John, looking forward to figuring this out together. And I think the thing that we have always uh, relied on is the fact that we have like instant feedback from our members directly. We work for them. We're nonprofit. We're not in, 
you know, we don't report to shareholders. We, we're not trying to make a buck. We're trying to serve the industry as best we can. And so with that as, with that as our guideposts, we can make a decision that best serves the industry without profit motive and all the other things that go into trying to run a business. Uh, and so that, that frees us up. And my hope is that as we figure this out, the industry will be very vocal. It will tell us, our board will tell us what to do. And we will, um, as happy warriors, I think that we will implement that plan and move forward in a way that serves the industry um, based on what the industry tells us at once, which is the beauty of this entire arrangement. So I look forward to figuring that out with you and, and moving on and, and seeing what the future does hold because it will be different. But I think um, I think it'll be exciting in many in many different ways. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I love that you pointed out that we're a non you know we're we're Switzerland in all this. We want we want the industry to be successful, and if that means Atlanta is thriving, then let's grow Atlanta. And if that means Dallas or Magic, let's 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 uh, let's keep those. Um, Let's let's keep those those things vibrant. OR is supposed to be a great show uh, this year, so uh, I, I love the fact that we're agnostic in all this. Um, obviously, there's there's some interest to our members in New York and some other spots, but uh, uh, the uh, that's our that's our our mission is to do what's best for the industry, do what's best for FDRA members. There you go. Help the faithful in footwear, but be non-denominational while doing it. Got it. So, uh, amen. <laughs> preaching to the choir. Here we go. Uh, Praise the shoe. I mean, <laughs> John, John, thanks for joining us today. And, and, uh, again, you know, make sure you go check out the directory, make sure, uh, you update your information. If you're not part of Fannie and you're not part of FDRA, we are a nonprofit, but, uh, we do use membership dues to fund our efforts to support the industry and to ameliorate the industry uh, and raise the game up a little bit higher. Um, so please, please do join so that we can add you to our directory and get you more involved and and help your footwear business. And now with the the merger of the two organizations, we're now able to help all the way from designing shoes to selling shoes to the retailers and all the way into consumer buying habits with our sales surveys that we're doing uh, both from stores, but also our, our nationwide shoe shopping survey. So we, we provide products, services, and support across every single department in a footwear company, whether you're a brand, whether you're a retailer, whether you're a startup, whether you're a service provider uh, helping, helping these companies uh, we're looking for, people to join and, and help support and enhance our industry as a whole. Uh, and that's what we have a heart for. Um, and that's what we hope uh, people see from us. Uh, as always, if you have any comments on these shows, ideas for shows we should do, go to shoeandshow.com. Our full catalog is there. Um, also, if you have any other questions about Fannie Market Week, you have questions about membership or, or anything like that, please just go to fdra.org. Uh, and drop us a line. The, the email address is info at fdra.org. We can direct you to the right person, regardless of whatever question or issue you may have. Happy to do that. Um, so on behalf of our team here, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Uh, we look forward to see the reemergence of the footwear industry in a physical space, merged in some way with the digital. And I think if we have the mentality of being curious enough and innovative enough and willing We'll figure out whatever that hybrid is as we keep going, as it as the churn keeps happening. But uh, we'll be there every step of the way to support and serve as best as possible. So thank you for that. And until next time, Shoe In is out. Shoe In has been brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.